Hi. <laughs> so hot. Jesus hot. All right. Welcome to Car Tech. I haven't been here for a while. It's been a long time since I've done this. I don't commute to work via car anymore. But today, it's the middle of the day, in the middle of the summer, and it's hot. I have this air conditioner on full, which I'm sure you can hear. And I want to talk to you about building binaries for Node Serial Port. So, what are we doing now, and where do we want to go? Right now, we have four CIs going, four different ones for every commit, every push, every pull request to Node Serial Port. Um, almost. So, the current one, the current obvious, well, the current usual ones are Travis CI, which has the pull requests and the push hooks. And Travis CI will build both Linux 32 bit and 64 bit and Mac 64 bit binaries and run all our tests, compile our code, and use versions of Node meant for all of those. It works great most of the time. We don't have a ton of control. It's a little slow to start uh, just to reinstall everything. I think we can even make it a little faster, but it works. It works and it's good. It does the publishing and their interface. Uh, while we're an open source project, so we don't pay for it, it takes a while to provision. Uh, hardware, it, it, if something, one job and a whole batch fails, we can rerun that one job, it's great. For Windows, we use a service called AppFair. AppFair lets us run, um, uh, they, they're getting better all the time, but they run Windows 2008 server and that's it. And they let us build, and we're able to build binaries for all the node versions um, for 32-bit and 64-bit Windows. That works too, we've done that. They're a lot slower to provision, they're much slower than Travis. Um, it takes a good half an hour to get a full build to go through there. But half hour, you know, same time as everything else is going, it's normally okay. It was, the speed of open source is an instant. If you, or me usually, are developing immediately and I want to know if this is going to work everywhere, or if I'm trying to build a feature for Windows and I'm on my Mac, uh, that's, that's tough. You know, we never release without actually hooking it up to physical hardware, but we're not always developing on all the different platforms we're, we're working on. So. One of the things we did to help mi mitigate this is we made integration tests with Arduino. And so we read and write and command and control an Arduino. And it's a physical device that's there and it lets us do work. And it's a beautiful thing. But uh, that's fine locally, but our CIs, none of them can have it. So what happened? Microsoft donated a machine to the Node.js Foundation's testing infrastructure that runs Windows 10 and has an Arduino plugged in. And this Arduino is sitting there. It, uh, it now has our test code loaded, and pretty soon we'll have an automatically updating, uh, the ability to automatically update again using uh, Suze Hinton's AVR Girl. Which is funny, because that uses serial port as well, but um, it will deploy new Arduino code and allow us to run these integration tests. And its only major problem is, is it's very little GitHub integration. Which means it does it nightly and it doesn't do it on pushes or pull requests or anything like that. It only does the master branch and when it fails, it doesn't do anything. I have to go there and check it. And that's not ideal. And you know, I, you may or may not know, I've got a lot of, uh, I used to work in a network operations center. And if you have to manually check something, it's as good as not being there. You know, it's just, it's not, it's not worth, uh, it, it, you know, it, when every other CI reports back to GitHub, you know, what are we doing? And so, we can build a script for it to run, I suppose. We have to make our own little app for it. Um, and that will get us an okay way. We could also build a little server to serve up a badge, I suppose. Um, it would, you know, it, 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 that integration needs work, so be it. But it's the only place we have a CI with an Arduino and that's a wonderful thing and it, it, it makes me so happy. I, I, I just, I'm beside myself. Uh, because that makes Windows 10 and, and uh, our tests are actually failing on Windows 10, who knew? Uh, not that anything was wrong with our code, but our tests, you know, they changed how one of the functions fails between Windows 10 and all the others and um, so we, uh, you know, who knew? Because uh, I don't have a Windows 10 machine to test on. So that's where we are. 
Um, oh, I mentioned we had a few more CIs. We have one that tests all our dependencies. Make sure that they have the appropriate licensing. Make sure that they um, are maintained and not dead projects, things like that. Um, and we don't have a ton of dependencies, so that makes life easier. We have some that are a little larger than I'd like, and I'm working on getting the node module size down to be much smaller. I'd like it to be under a megabyte. Um, it, in that vein, we dropped Grunt, which is a test runner. We dropped a, um, a bunch of other, like we had a polyfill library where the, comp the running code is very small, but the node modules folder was gigantic. It was like another 80 megs. When you have devices that only have 40 megabytes of hard drive, it's just impossible. It's like you, that does not work. So, um, you know, small modules makes large module folders. Uh, <laughs> uh, working to get it, get a, around that. So we have that one CI, which gives us a little bit of heads up into it. Um, so the future, I think, is maybe something called Lamb CI. However. It itself is not going to work for us, but the technology used to build LAMB CI is beautiful and I love it. And I want to not fork it, but build our own infrastructure around it. And I think this is actually going to be really good for any node binary module platform. We have hardware for everything we need, except for PowerPC servers, and I don't care to be honest. Uh, well, they are not a high priority. Uh, we can get VMs for it, and we can get VMs from for all the standard computing hardware, and we have physical computing hardware for all the other platforms, for your MIPS, for your ARMS. Uh, we have three different levels of ARMS we want to support, uh, our MIPSL, um, and uh, there are like the Edison is a 32-bit Intel, but it doesn't actually have all the all the things that a normal 32-bit, an emulated 32-bit one has, has less instruction sets, you can't actually pre-compile for it, which, which sucks. Um, so what do we build? Um, we need to build our own testing infrastructure that has Arduinos, that has these integration steps built in, which means we can't really use VMs. Now, having these machines built and deployed without a VM makes me a little nervous, but uh, we can, uh, well, provide hardware to VMs as long as we run those VMs, we have access to the hardware. So this is co-location, not Amazon. Um, and we can, and for all the non-standard hardware that we will probably mount to our wall, um, you know, because none of it's rack mountable, of course, we, we can have, um, uh, have it run like Jenkins or things like that. And so we can have a Jenkins host, we can have this kind of stuff. Now Jenkins is slow, it's old, it supports a ton of stuff. I don't actually know that Jenkins will, is big though. I don't know they'll actually run on all these hardware. I know Docker will run on most of the hardware. The only place I don't think it will run is, is on our is on the Tesla 2 Mipsels. We might be able to get some beefier Mipsel hardware to run this on. Um, and so now we can have a Docker VM image. Uh, the VM is not the right, a Docker container uh, that has all these different uh, CPU architectures either natively or emulated. And we can do it emulated as well with an, an Arduino plugged in. And so now we can have this start a test the Arduino is yours, you run one on these instances at a time, you know, if you need, you know, one, Ard one Arduino required build anyway at a time. Uh, you get to wipe the Arduino, run your tests, maybe it automatically wipes afterwards so you don't leak the code, and reports back to GitHub. And that's the CI I want to build. LAM CI is um, an Amazon Lambda CI, which uh, uses Docker containers, can work with Docker, um, and, or if possible, run in these Lambda instances. So if your tests run in 30 seconds, um, you can have these ephemeral things that run your code. And it's, it's a beautiful little thing. It is almost serverless, right? The real, like, like, Amazon Lambda can't have an art, can't have our Arduinos. Um, where's that coming from? Not behind me, below me. Okay. So, so while I think it can help, perhaps, uh, Lamb CI with Docker can emulate hardware and we could test on more architectures without an Arduino, I think we really should focus on having that Arduino. And, um, and, and by an Arduino, it is an easily programmable serial, USB serial device 
and and uh, that it's fairly bulletproof, really cheap, really easy to program for, really easy to get at home. I think we could provide other serial devices to test against, but like uh, when you can make it do anything you want, why you know why uh, why change it up? And so that's the goal. Um, so steal code from Lambda from, from Lamb CI. Uh, leverage Docker. Um, leverage Docker's virt v um, emu uh, hardware emulation, which uses QEMU under the hood, or leverage Docker hosts that are of the architecture we want. Oh, and I completely missed Windows, right? So Docker, Windows Docker containers is a new thing. It's in beta right now. And I think the infrastructure we build to handle Linux can handle Windows. And we can have a uh, probably a Windows... 7, 8, 10 uh, VM, uh, no, sorry, not VMs, or maybe VMs even, running Docker with Arduinos pr uh, provisioned to them, and that would that would work out. And that way we'd get our Windows infrastructure, we'd have our Linux infrastructure, and all being told and said, we have about, uh, I think, 40 or 50 different cross-section of Node.js's and hardware and operating systems I want to test on and that will give us what we need so uh, that's my brain dump on that thought I'm not sure I have it I've ever put it out all in one place before if you're interested in helping out I would love the help um, if you're interested in just following along um, check out to see what I do with node serial port because that's going to be the test bed for all of this and I think we can have a really cool fast CI that does all of these builds in, uh, in an appropriate way. Um, I should call out to existing Docker CI things like, oh shoot, I don't remember its name. Um, there are some existing ones. They're weird and I don't want them weird. I want this to be as easy and as simple as your Travis instance, as your um, app fair, as your circle CI. Uh, I, I just, you know, the, the only major difference is, you know, um, tech we use under the hood. Okay, uh, talk to you soon.